Hi, Paul. Thank you so much for being here today. Hey there. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, so we met, I believe, last year at an event called the National Day of Rest yep. when you were a speaker. Um, mm -hmm. And I loved everything you were sharing about your experience living with tribes and studying human behavior and what really makes us tick. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was really interesting to speak to you today. But just a few, uh, a int quick introduction before we go too far into it. Um, you've been in the fitness industry for over 15 years um, and have cultivated a reputation for being one of the top athletic trainers in your field with a strong following of clients ranging from professional and Olympic athletes, celebrities, executives, and everything in between. Paul Vincent is co-founder of Altus Health, a renowned health management team with medical and athletic professionals providing the tools and treatments for your clients to live their healthiest lives. Um, Paul, can you tell us just a little bit about how you got started in the health space and a bit more about your practice, Altus Health? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I um, used to compete in different sports. So I, I was track and field, and then I got into expedition length adventure racing. And so I was getting really in touch with the body and what it took to kind of achieve health and fitness. And that led me to study you know, uh, kinesiology, biomechanics, and I got a master's degree in human performance, it's called, which is basically just nutrition, everything that makes a human healthy. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, that, that became sort of my interest. And I really enjoyed, you know, working with people and, you know, having them live sort of optimally. And me and my brother, my brother uh, is a sports chiropractor. And so him and I were referring a lot of business. So then we decided, you know, let's partner. And we came up with the concept of Alta's Health because what we saw was that people try and compartmentalize their health. They go somewhere and they take care of the nutrition or they take care of their, you know, exercise or they take care of their sleep, but it's all one unit. And so we wanted to create a system that looked at everything in unity. And so we could untangle where they were sort of having trouble um, and sort of put it into one unified program. And so that's sort of the concept we came up with, Alta. So, so that's basically the concept we came up with was to kind of, you know, look at the body as one organism and mm -hmm. create a program that gets everything in tune because there can be the best program in nutrition, the best program in exercise, best program, whatever part of health there is. But if it's not unified, it won't really have that much effect. And the other factor is, if I spend an hour a day, you know, three days, four days a week on, uh, on exercise, it's only 3% of my time. So I'm not really going to change my, my, my health with that. So we also had to look at habits and behavior. And so that's what Altus is really about, is about a lifestyle adaptation. And so the, the, the byproduct of that lifestyle becomes the goals you want in health. And how do you see sleep as being a part of that for your clients? And where maybe in the process do you address that with people? We, we address it right away. It's critical. Um, so we look at lifestyle, you know, and one of the biggest factors we're talking about is like, when do you go to sleep? When do you wake up? How, what's your quality of sleep? You know, all that hygiene around sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and most people don't know this, but the brain is actually more active when you're asleep because it's going through all these cleansing processes. Um, and there's another process that's called apoptosis that happens when you're sleeping in a, or in a fasted state, which it, it purges all the deformant cells, all the old cells, so you can regenerate new ones. And so all this happens in sleep cycles. And so it's such a critical time and people aren't, you know, sleeping well. So they're waking up in this, their body's in a stress state. So it's not recovered. So when you're not recovered, you're in a stress state. And so then they're just struggling through their day. And then they're trying to layer on top of that exercise and or force themselves to eat a certain way and it's just a struggle and so we start with sleep are you using any tools to measure sleep or how do you look at that with people to know if improvements are being made you know we don't there's, there's a lot of like wearables and stuff yeah and if people have them we'll we'll check on them but right. often what i find is that that becomes an added stress so now they're measuring their sleep you know i even tell people um, you know, not to count how many hours they slept mm. to be responsible for it, for going to sleep. But what happens? And I used to do this. I used to wake up in the morning and like count backwards. Okay. How many hours I sleep? Oh my goodness. I'm going to be tired today. And you're judging it. And then you're judging it. 
And so now I've decided that's what I'm going to be today. Mm -hmm. And then I need stimulants, coffee and whatever it is to kind of get me going. So what we do is we talk about um, setting routines. So the time you go to bed and the time you wake up being really consistent with that because your body works on a rhythm. It's called circadian rhythm. And once your body's in that rhythm, that rhythm triggers all internal processes of the body. You know, so it even affects microbiome. So what, what bacteria is released in the gut to digest what kinds of food? Mm. So even things like that are thrown off if sleep's not, not in order. So instead of having all these measures, what I do is just really just consistency. Hey, create a routine before you go to bed, mm-hmm. and then we'll get your body processing. So we to, uh, sleep, um, what, what, what happens when you're in sleep is actually the wavelength of the brain is changing and you're going from uh, beta, alpha, um, theta into delta and delta is sleep. So you wanna get the brain to slowly come down into that state. So we create routines and then they go to bed consistently at the same time and wake up at the same time. Mm-hmm. What, what most people do is if they, there's something comes up at night and they have to stay up later, then they'll shift their daytime. Now what happens, they're not tired until later that night. So what I have people do is wake up at the same time, no matter what time you go to bed, do your best. And yeah. you might be tired, but you're going to get right back into that cycle, that rhythm. You're going to stay in that rhythm as opposed to that now the rhythm's completely off. Mm-hmm. Well, that was the question I wanted to ask you about was um, there has been so much keeping us at, up at night this year. Mm. Um, you know, Google searches for help with sleep or insomnia related issues are double, triple what they were a year ago. So we know this is a major issue people are dealing with. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you give yourself the room you need to rest, either by creating physical space, mental space, or is it just come down to discipline with going to sleep early? Well, it's just sort of all of it. So first mm-hmm. of all, sleep, the, 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 the environment you go to sleep in is critical. Mm-hmm. You know, And um, it's got to be like free from clutter it's got to be like there shouldn't be a lot of activities there it should be very comfy very welcoming so you mm-hmm. want it's almost like if you think of like an animal kind of creating like a little you know their little um hovel or something where they go and, and sleep and you want to have that we're, we're we're animals and so we like that cozy routine the blankets and you know especially like the wake weighted blanket you know that you guys have is so fantastic for that because you, you get that um, coddling effect, you get that you know, feeling of safety. And that's really important for us when we sleep because we have a part of our brain, the amygdala, which operates faster than the rational part of the brain. And it's searching for potential danger, even when we're sort of going to sleep. So if you think about it, if you close your eyes, you're still hearing what sounds are going around. So if you were in bed and you heard a loud bang, you'd wake up, mm-hmm. the amygdala is still active. And so the more safe you feel, the more that part of your brain can sort of calm down. So that's, that aspect is, is really critical. So the environment is critical. Now, the other part, which is interesting, is when we worry, when we have stress, the danger is not usually happening in that moment. Mm-hmm. Right? We're, we're designed for immediate danger. We're designed for if a lion's attacking me, what do I do? You know, mm-hmm. or a baboon, do I run? You know, do I defend myself? You know, we have a, a third. So, so humans, they flee or they fight or they freeze. So there's oh. three aspects of the brain where it's like a shock and it just stops. So those aspects happen. And so we want to, with, 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 with the, um, getting into this sleep routine, is understand, are we actually in danger in that moment? So I always ask myself and I tell my clients, ask yourself, are, am I in danger right now? Mm-hmm. You know, or am I safe right now? If you're safe right now, What's happening is you have gone off into your thoughts, into your mind, and you're worrying about stuff out there. Now, what I, what I also explain this, and this is, it, gets, it gets a little um, interesting, this part, but thoughts don't happen in the dimension of matter, right? So we live in the dimension, a three-dimensional world, right, of mm-hmm. space. You know, there's physical things. Thoughts don't happen in that dimension. Dimension just means a measure of a space. So it's not some sci-fi thing. It's just how do we measure the space? We measure with depth and height. Mm-hmm. So in the, the dimension of thought, there isn't, it's, it's a different dimension because it doesn't have the depth and height. Like if, you, if I said, hey, think of a pink elephant, you could, but you couldn't show me that pink ele- elephant, right? right. Electrochemical 
you know, um, uh, reactions in your brain, there'd be electromagnetic signals, but you couldn't show me that because it doesn't exist in this dimension. So what people do, they get into bed and when it's quiet, then they start drifting off into this other alternate reality and they start worrying about it. Now the brain, the body can't tell the difference. I don't know if you ever had an experience where you've, you've gone for a swim in the ocean or somewhere and you've thought about a shark or something and got nervous. Yes. <laughs> there might not be a shark there, but you get the physical sensation as though there might be. So you get adrenaline, cortisol, all these stress hormones. And so now you're in a stress state. It's not a stress state to, to the body doesn't doing it to, to stress you out. It's preparing you for fighting or fleeing. Right. So when we go to sleep, we do the same thing. We think of all these things that we worry. And that triggers these processes, these stress processes, which won't let us go to sleep, right? Because mm -hmm. it wants you to be alert. It's like, oh my God, there's danger. Don't go to sleep now. And so that's such a critical part is that you don't go off into this fantasy world. And thought can only be fantasy made up or they can be past or future. They can't be present. If it's present, you're not actually thinking. You're not in that dimension of thought. So developing a practice around that, but there are some tools you can do. Now, one of them that, that I teach is to have a place to strategize about these things you worry about, right? A time and a place like, oh, you know, it's like going to work, going to the office. In my office, that's where I think about work. When I leave the office, I don't think about it anymore. Now mm -hmm. that's where it takes the discipline because mm -hmm. the brain, it's, it's, it feels like it's automatic. And it is for a lot of us because we haven't, we, we've allowed our, our minds to sort of take control, but we can quite easily get that control back. So I have a place to strategize and strategizing is thinking. That's, that's really what the brain's good at is strategizing how to solve this problem, not just conjuring up scenarios that could be risky for you. That's like, it's almost like gossiping in your mind. So you wanna right. leave that alone. So find a place to strategize. I even have a, a client who he has a, a hat that he wears. So he can only think about work when he's wearing this hat. <laughs> and so, so when you're not wearing that, and the thought comes up, he lets it go. Oh, I gotta run and put my hat on, which it just, <laughs> It just um, separates, you know, when, we, when, when it's time to think about this stuff and when it's not. And mm -hmm. so that's not to condition your brain. Now, the other thing I do is I keep a journal by my bed. So before I get in bed, if there's things I need to remember or need to do, I can just write it down. Hey, tomorrow I want to accomplish this. Oh, remember to call this person. And so now I'm not worrying about it. Mm -hmm. So that's the second part. Now, the third part is getting into a mindful state. So um, a meditative state. Um, and so these are the routines that I do before I go to bed and I have a very rigid routine, it, it only takes a few minutes, but I'm consistent with it. And that separates me from my waking time, what I have to accomplish in the day and my rest time, my sleep time. And it's really important we have that transition. You know, and I use catharsis, which is just releasing energy. So I do catharsis every day. And I also um, do breath work and a little meditation before I go to sleep. And that transitions the wavelength of the brain that I mentioned earlier. And so then I'm in a sleep, ready for a sleep state, and then I fall into sleep. And how long have you had that as a consistent practice? I would say a few years now. Like I've been teaching it, you know, we really got into sleep and stuff maybe three years ago. Like we were teaching aspects of help, but sleep became really important to us. Um, these, these routines, um, they're sort of like the, the, the now the bedrock of our programs at Altus are these routines. And we created a... Um, an online platform that just takes you through morning and evening routines. So mm -hmm. probably been developing for about three years and I vary them because I'm testing different ones, mm -hmm. um, but they're all within the same parameters. So probably about three years, I'm pretty rigid with mine, even when I travel and stuff, you know, and it's not, it's not like some big thing that you miss out on stuff. I still live I, a, a very full life. I mean, I think the fact that you said it's short is really mm -hmm. powerful because that means that you can't, you can't yeah. find excuses not to do it. You can totally. always find excuses, but you can keep that be part of your life every day. Um, yeah. I, I think, I mean, habits are so powerful. They're, they're extremely powerful. Everything. Everything. You know, if you look at your life, you know, and what you do, if you, if you do like a, a, an assessment of, of your day and life, there's a lot of things that you're doing that aren't in alignment with what you, the life you want to have. Mm -hmm. And so we're really taking inventory of that is so important. And then creating these rituals or habits that, attain or, or, or align with what you want. And the fact that they sound so simple might make us think that they're not that impactful, but sometimes it's those small things that you do or don't do that make such a big difference. Totally. 
And, you know, we're so used to um, an impactful change, you know, in our society, in the, in the modern sort of Western society, we want big impactful things. It's like, if I have um, a pain, I want it taken away right now. I want it numbed or gone, as mm. opposed to developing, you know, that movement and getting alignment better, which might take more time. It's the same with whatever, nutritionally or, or medicine or whatever. I want it to have an impact. With my clients, like I tell them like, hey, try this routine. You might not notice that you feel anything the next day or the day after that, but I want to talk to you in a few weeks down the road and go, hey, now what is your life like? You know, our programs are usually a year. You know, we just get, we develop these habits over a year and we have, um, we have them in 21 day cycles because it takes about 21 days to set a habit. So every 21 days, we change the habit a little bit. So by the end of the year, you are living a completely different life, but you didn't really notice that you were because it's so, the changes are so, um, uh, they're not so impactful. So you're just like doing it. Like we don't want to come in like a sledgehammer and go, okay, change your whole life. We're like, no, let's adapt it gently. So you don't have this big immediate kind of reaction, but very gently you have these changes and you look back and go, oh, wow, I used to be more stressed. I used to kind of stay up at night. I used to have these things and they just sort of disappear out of your life. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful to have someone keeping you on course because mm. I think that it's simple, but it's definitely not easy to do that by yourself. No, because we're, we're the ones taking us off course. So, yeah. you know, and then, and then what we try and do, we try and, um, come and discuss it in this dimension of thought, right? We have a little conversation with ourselves and motivate ourselves, but it's not in this physical world. Mm -hmm. So having someone else there or having a program that you follow, it makes it real. And so it's like, okay, I can't convince myself not to do it. I can't justify myself out of it, or at least it's, it's, it's harder to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's super helpful to have these, these sort of guides and these parameters around it. Yeah, we're, we're at the new year and a lot of, we all know we're all making resolutions for health and wellness, especially 2021, I think. Are there some simple, easy, like to break it down for people, yeah. tip that you would offer to people? Totally. Um, so I would, I would, you know, I, there's a very simple evening routine. One, one important element is to remove blue light. So this rhythm I talked about, the circadian rhythm, it's triggered by light. So it's supposed to be sunlight. So our body's designed to be in alignment when the sun rises and it starts to trigger processes in our brains and we get sort of internal processes get triggered from that, get started. So in the evening, start to think about making the, the room or your house, if you can, sort of uh, mimic like sun, uh, sun setting, mm -hmm. an orange and amber colors. That will tell the brain, hey, daytime sort of ending, start to get ready for sleep. Then what I do, there's, I do, you know, the next very simple thing is you can do this um, ratio breathing. So you breathe in for four count and then out for an eight count. And you just do that for a few minutes and you, your brain will start to shift. So that ratio of, um, of, of inhale to exhale being a longer exhale will actually shift the, the rhythm of the brain. There's another really interesting one if people do have trouble sleeping, which is to, is to create a rhythm with your hands. So you're just tapping and you're tapping fast. And then over time, so you do that, this for about three breaths, this fast. And then you slowly start to diminish the, the, the speed of it. So I don't know if you can hear that, but it's getting slower and you just keep going. And it's probably over a few minutes until it's really slow and it stops. The brain follows rhythm. That's why I don't know if you've seen any, any of these like indigenous people, they do ceremonies, they use rattles and drums because the brain follows those rhythms or chanting, you can get into a rhythm. Mm -hmm. So that tapping actually starts the brain at this sort of fast, fast, you know, speed, and then it slowly slows it down. And that drops the wavelength of the brain. It's why when, when people guide you in meditation, they speak slowly and they slide mm -hmm. off. So you're getting relaxed now. That's telling the brain, I've never heard of that before, but this, ex this exercise, but I can even feel it as I could hear you patting your legs. I could feel that change yeah. in the tone and the speed. Yeah, that's so that's amazing. really good. One. So, so they're great. And then the next, I, I would say waking up in the morning, if you can, the most critical one, you know, there's, there's breath work and, 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 and meditation, all that stuff in the morning. But what I like to do is go outside and if you can barefoot, stand on the ground. So that's grounding. So you're connecting with um, the rhythm, which, you know, there's a scientific explanation of that too. So it's not so just- magnetic field of the earth right it's that but also we are um 
everything in the universe is made up of atoms, right? Mm -hmm. And atoms, they have a, a positive nucleus and uh, negative electrons. What happens when we, when we go through our day and, and the stresses of our day, we lose these electrons. Nature produces extra negative electrons. And so when you get into nature, you're actually picking up these electrons. It's charging you up. And so in, in Japan, you might have heard it's called Shinrin-yoku. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it means forest bathing. So what happens when you go into forests or into nature, you start to absorb these negative ions and it balances out. It makes us calmer. So if you start the day sort of getting in tune and also the magnetic field for sure, um, and you get in tune, but what I do, I have my eyes closed and I face the sun. And so I'm getting sunlight on my face. Now that's, you know, starting to trigger this process in my body. And so now I'm waking up and I'm feeling alive and I'm connected with nature. So I'm, I start off in a calm state. Mm -hmm. So there, there are lots of rhythm, there are lots of routines and stuff, but I would say just to give a little nugget, those two are really, really important ones. Yeah. Um, and I love to ask this question. I think that it's easy to, to sort of talk about how horrible 2020 has been, but um, it has been very challenging, brought up a lot of disruption and change, but what would you say has been your, your biggest learning or silver lining this year? There's a, there's a few of them. I've been thinking about this a lot and talking to a lot of my clients about it. You know, it's when we, we don't like change as, as, a, as a species, as humans. We like rhythm, routine, familiarity but everything was just disrupted. It completely fell apart for a lot of people. And what I, I talk to people about is like, it's an opportunity in that. Maybe we don't want to piece it back together exactly the way it was. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same with, with my business. Like I had, you know, part of my business is the physical space, you know, actual personal training session, physical therapy session, chiropractic session, like that just fell apart. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh, should I put it back together the way it was? Or this is an opportunity to rethink it. And I know people who are rethinking their whole life. Where do I, where can I live? Where do I need to work from the same place? Like companies are now doing a lot online, meetings online and stuff. So it's a, it's an opportunity to reassess everything, to look at, okay, what it, what is it that I want in my life? Is this an opportunity to go get it? Mm -hmm. you know, there's another element that I really liked. And this happened uh, mostly at the beginning when this first happened. This is the first time in the history of humanity that we have become one species. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that we bond together, right? And to bond together, we have, a, have to have a, a, con a common enemy. You know, that's why like sports teams work. Hey, this is my sports team, that's yours. You know, and we feel we're part of a tribe being part of a sports, supporting a sports team. But for the first time we had one common enemy as a species, we've never had that before. So we had COVID-19 was the one thing against humanity. And so it brought us together. And I thought that was really nice. Very quickly, we separated back into our own, you know, country, tribe. whatever, a tribe, exactly, yeah. our own tribes. But I think it was really nice. It showed that there's that possibility, you know, of us coming together. Yeah, yeah, that's really true. What is it that you are the most optimistic about or looking forward to for going into 2021? You know, what I think, you know, I think people in this really got present to mm -hmm. how important health is. You know, and maybe the lifestyles they were living weren't so, you know, healthy. And so I feel there's going to be a renaissance of health, of fitness, of people really sort of taking that on. You know, it's, it, it's like it's already there. People have the desire, but right now it still doesn't feel safe to do it. And right. so as we kind of cross that hurdle, you know, we, 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 you know, people are comfortable sort of going out and discovering these things. I think there's going to be a big renaissance of health. And I hope that... Um, it does, you know, especially the people who didn't have access to it before, you know, to healthy foods, to, you know, sleep, to, um, you know, exercise. I uh, hopefully they'll get it into their, into their life now and it'll become part of their habits and routines. Yeah. It's been so much fun speaking with you. It's always inspiring. Um, I want to thank you for being here. It's great to catch up. Where, where would you recommend that people go to find you? You know, we, you can go to our website. So altushealth.com. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, check that out. And there's even access to these routines and stuff that I talked about. So that's probably a good place to start. Okay, perfect. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for having me. It was great.